Today, we're going to show you using AutoStackert and WaveShop to process a satin video image file. We've used Fire Capture to collect a video file of satin from a few nights ago. And you can see that file is located here. And the first thing we, we want to do is we want to move that file and open it in AutoStackert. So we'll go ahead and do that. As you can see, that video image is, video file is now open. If I go ahead and click on play in AutoStackert, you can see that the quality of the video due to atmospheric disturbance is really not that great. But let's go ahead and process it anyway using a few simple steps. I'm gonna go ahead and click on stop to stop that video file. The first thing I need to do is to uh, go ahead and look at my settings here on the right hand side. So I've got dynamic background and platinet uh, selected along with um, automatic for all these settings as well. So pretty much the default settings. I did check off here to normalize the stack. Um, that will uh, normalize the brightness of the final image and then do some RGB alignment and then save that file in a folder. Let's go ahead and click on Analyze. This just takes a few seconds while Order Stack it analyzes the quality of all the frames in that video file. And you'll see here the progress is moving pretty quickly and it is now done. The quality of the video file, just as we showed earlier, is not that great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select um, about 10% of the frames that lie above the 50% quality setting. So if I click here at around 10%, uh, you can see here um, in AutoStacker that equates to about 3,700 frames that it's going to process. What I can do here in the frame percentage to stack, I'm gonna put in 10. So that represents 10% of those best frames. The next thing I want to do is to select my alignment points. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Place Alignment Points Grid. And so you can see here, um, I've got about 37 alignment points. And most importantly, those alignment points represented by these red dots here are kept away from the edge uh, in this image. And that kind of reduces uh, the risk of artifacts appearing in the final product. So I've got my alignment point selected. I'm now gonna go over here and click on stack. This takes anything from just a few seconds to up to a couple of minutes. It really depends on uh, the number of frames that you've uh, chosen to stack. In our case, we've only chosen 10%. So it's really uh, not that many frames that we need to be concerned about. And so you can see here the progress is moving at a pretty rapid pace. We're almost at 100%. And there we go. So 100%, all the analysis and stacking is completed. And now we can go ahead. If we look at that um, folder again, uh, that has the video file in there, you now see that there's been a folder has been created by AutoStackit. And if I open that folder, you can see there is the stacked image. What I'm now going to do is I'm now gonna go into WaveShop and I'm gonna drag that image over to then open the image in WaveShop. The first thing I'd like to do is go ahead and magnify that image. So there's a little magnify button here that will zoom in. And the nice thing about using this is that it really helps me sort of see the impact of the changes in the settings that I'm about to undergo. I've left all the settings in WaveShop at their default. So you can see the color model, the convolve and the filter are all set at the default settings. The first thing I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna move through these three sharpen filters. And basically what they do is they, they sharpen the image uh, going from a fine sharpening all the way through to a more coarse sharpening. So the first thing I'm gonna do is move this slider at the top here all the way to the right. And you can see here the image is starting to sharpen, but what you'll also notice is noise is starting to appear in that image. 
What I'm also going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and increase the sharp and filter just by a few points here. And you can see the noise has gone up, but also the image is correspondingly sharpened as well. And we'll worry about the noise in a few moments. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the next filter down. Move that all the way to the right. And you can see a little bit of sharpening has taken place. And I'm going to increase this value here as well. Now, each image is going to vary in terms of the uh, amount of sharpened filters you apply. In our case, because we just didn't have a great image to begin with, um, we may be able to get away with a bit more sharpening. And on the bottom one here, I'm moving that one all the way to the right as well. But I didn't bother changing this setting here. I think we've got enough sharpening in place without the uh, final image looking a little bit too unnatural. The next thing I want to do now is I want to go over into the denoise tool in WaveSharp. And this is a handy thing to do where um, you can turn on denoise. It's on here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the settings here at difference. In terms of the region of interest, I've got it here at 512. And I'm just going to increase that up to uh, 124. Um, and then what I'm going to do is these sliders here. So the filter start position, um, the filter feathering, and then the amount of curve um, on the filter. We're all going to change those settings. So on the first one here, I'm going to move this a little bit to the left. And you see as I do that, the noise has gone down a little bit. And maybe I'll just move it just a little bit more. Uh, just to kind of get most of the noise out the way. And so you can see here, some of that noise has gone down. On the feather setting, I'm going to kind of move that a little bit to the right. And you see as I do that, the noise has increased a little bit. So let's just move it back to the left until the noise is sort of not that evident, um, given the fact that we don't have a great quality image to begin with, but there you go. So that noise seems to have been reduced a little bit. The curve, I'm going to move that all the way to the left. And you can see when I do that, the noise starts to come back again. And so let's move that over to about minus three. So if you look at these three settings here, and then the corresponding graph, so the red uh, excuse me, the green bar here is a little bit to the left of where the curves separate, um, the red and uh, blue curves. And then the red bar is just after um, where the, um, the filtered spectrum starts to go down to zero. And then also we've got a nice clear separation of the two graphs as well. And if you look out for those things when you do your processing, you should end up with a fairly uh, well denoised image. So that's denoising. Let's go ahead and minimize this. And you'll now see here against the D on the denoise tool, there's a plus sign. That means denoise is being turned on. And the nice thing about it is if I click on it, I can now see when there's no denoise applied. So let's go ahead and reapply that. Now, the next thing we want to do is look at the RGB alignment. And so if I click on activate RGB and then click on COG, you can now see that there are some actually uh, some color shifts in the different channels and I can change that. So if I click on the red one first and if I move over here to the Y axis, I can use my mouse wheel to make those small adjustments to get it down to zero and then the same for the X axis. So that's the red channel. And let's do the same thing on the blue one. So use my mouse meal wheel to get it down to zero. And then same for the X axis. And there we've got the RGB alignment is now completed. I'm going to minimize this. And the last thing we want to look at is basically um, the RGB balance. So I'm going to click on automatic and you see the colors will change a little bit when I do that. And so we'll just use these default settings for now in RGB balance, and then we're done. And so what we can do now is we can now save that image. So we click on up here to save it. So we've done sharpening, we've done denoise, and we can save this either as a PNG file or we can save it as a TIFF file. I'm just going to leave it and save it as a PNG file. Click on save. 
and now that file is in the same folder it's right here so there's our sharpened denoised image ready for you to do additional processing it may be Photoshop or whatever other tools you have in place thanks for watching and feel free just go ahead and try out these tools for yourself and see where you go thanks